blank here of MYS. We're going to be starting in about four minutes. Uh, if you could please, in the comments of this live feed, let us know your name and where you're from. That would be awesome. We look forward to this. Everybody again, welcome to the live uh, skills training, baseball training. Uh, we'll begin in about two minutes. Uh, we're excited for you to be here today. A little at-home baseball workout. Um, we got some great experts here in the in the youth baseball and baseball world that we can uh, share with you while you're at home um, during this uh, time of isolation. Please share your name and where you're from in the comments. Yeah. We'll be sharing some other things throughout the time uh, with, with comments that we'll provide through MYS and Gopher State Baseball. Thank you. Again, uh, welcome everybody to the MYS Gopher State uh, Facebook Live uh, Baseball Skills Training. Uh, we are going to get started now. Again, if you have um, if you have just joined us, please make sure you share your name and where you're from. Uh, this is not this is for everybody in the state of Minnesota and Western Wisconsin, and even across the Upper Midwest. We want to be able to share some baseball. Uh, skills, drills for you while you're at home to continue to hone your skills during this time uh, of 
isolation and while we're at home, making sure to stay safe and healthy. healthy. My name is Dawson Blank. I'm the executive director at the Minnesota Youth Athletic Services. I've been a part of youth baseball since 1999 in the state of Minnesota. Uh, we are proud to have some great partners of ours here today over the years that have been able to provide such great training and expertise that they've shared along to so many people in the youth baseball world that are now um, do, having success in college along with just being uh, great adults in our society. So really quickly, first and foremost, want to have provide uh, have you provide continued health and safety for you and your family during this COVID-19 pandemic. For the time being, this is the new normal and we just need to adapt and we will come out of this together better than before. A few things. We wanted to make sure at MYS to provide an opportunity uh, to for baseball skills training for a number of years, actually since 1991, the MYS has provided opportunities and services for the youth baseball and basketball world uh, within the state of Minnesota to be able to uh, improve the delivery of youth sports services. You may know us through baseball as the Gover State Baseball League. We are to hopefully someday soon start our 21st year in that league. Uh, Gover State Fall Baseball League, our Gover State Tournament Champions, along with things that we did starting the year 2000 called the Gopher State Winter Baseball Camps. We, were, we are proud of the fact that today uh, we have Mr. Eric Lovedahl here of Lovedahl Pitching Academy, a longtime partner of ours uh, with, at the MYS. We have Coach Heeb, Dave Heeb, who is the winningest baseball coach at Northwestern University, all-time history. He's been a longtime uh, supporter of ours, and we're, it's so exciting to have him. Mr. Bo Lovedahl is here, a uh, former standout at Mounds View High School and an uh, MYS Gopher State alum, along with a uh, player at Bethel University. We have a special guest today, um, Louis Varlin, who is also an MYS Gopher State alum. He played for North St. Paul Baseball Association. He was a standout at North High, played at my alma mater, Concordia St. Paul in, in St. Paul, Minnesota. And in 2019, he was drafted by the Minnesota Twins. Uh, he is in their uh, minor league system right now, and he's gonna just uh, share a few things in just a minute. We at MYS, we want you to know that we're still here, and we're gonna get, continue to, to try to provide opportunities for the youth. We are committed now more than ever to you and to all of you sports to make this, uh, to, to get through this time together. So when we do have the opportunity to be around our friends and play the game of baseball again, we'll be more excited and ready to do that uh, and be able to enjoy the game, uh, learning the life lessons through sport. That's why we always are here to do that. Um, we are going to continue to do some things over the course of the next few weeks. We're going to provide a, additional live videos, if possible, at the homes of some of our, uh, some of our experts here today. We're going to continue our at-home baseball series, which will be uh, some drills, skills, techniques, mechanics that you can utilize at home uh, while you're waiting for the opportunity to play the game with your friends again. Um, but please look for that on our MYS our MYS Gopher State uh, Facebook and Twitter pages along with MYS.org. Again, we would also like to mention our uh, partners, the um, Institute for Athletic Me Medicine and M Health Fairview, along with Erica Sandell, who's a throwing, she's done uh, things related to throwing and the specialty of that with Eric Lovedahl for a number of years with us. We'd, th we'd like to thank her for her support. She is providing, and if you look in the comments below, she is, gonna, she is providing some uh, opportunities for you to go through dynamic warm-ups, some skills training, some things that Coach Lo uh, Eric Lovedell will provide today uh, as far as mechanics that you can go through on a daily basis. Um, and I think Coach uh, Eric Lovedall and, and Bo and Coach Heber are going to be able to do some of those things that you could see on the video that she has provided. We're going to also provide her contact, her email on the comments below if you would like to reach out directly to her. Again, we're all in this together. 
and virtually we will make this happen. So before Coach Eric Lovedahl starts out, I'd like to uh, bring up Louis Varland. He just wants to talk to you for just a minute or two as somebody that has gone through it as a youth baseball player, high school player, collegiate standout, and now is in the Minnesota Twins minor league system. Louis. Hey guys, I'm Louis. Uh, as Dawson said, I played through the Gopher State, played with, uh, played with North St. Paul, Concordia, and I'm with the Twins. And I just want to say, all the exercises, stretches, arm care, and all this work that you put in now, uh, it, it, it is important to prepare for the season. And also, uh, all these drills and everything, I've done through, through every, every, uh, every, every level I went through. So youth, high school, uh, college, and now professional, I did these drills so they work. It's the right stuff to do, so work hard. Uh, Stay safe and and have fun. All right, thank you, Louis. Okay, again, we're gonna all get this through, through this together. Virtually, we're gonna continue to provide opportunities for you, the youth. Um, without further ado, a guy that I've known for uh, 21 years, a great friend, a colleague, and an expert expert when it comes to pitching, throwing mechanics. Mr. Eric Lovedahl. Thank you, Dawson. Thanks, Dawson. I just want to shout out to Dawson and the incredible crew at MYS. They're, they're fabulous. They're blue collar. They're genuine. This is not something to take advantage of. It's just out of true concern for ball players and coaches statewide and region wide. So just on behalf, thanks so much. Welcome to our home opener. You're based at home. Just FYI, there's only six of us here today and we're we're truly take this serious. We're spaced out, just like you're going to be at home at your house in your yard, maybe up in a park or something. Obviously, that's up to your families and stuff making decisions. But this is serious stuff, <laughs> as we all know, and you know, just staying safe and smart on that. So, but again, welcome to our home opener. We're going to get right in to kind of treat this like a practice, and hopefully, this is something you're doing today and and, and so on. But uh, we want to thank the staff coming here and Louis Varlin. Louis was just at spring training, so everything we're going over, we're not reinventing the game college and professional level they're doing the same drills little leaguers doing it's just quality reps things like that so as we go obviously stretching is huge stuff I say all the time I wish I would have done more when I was younger is stretching you know obviously everything's changed but just you know a lot of arm swings stuff we know of I would start out just doing a lot of arm swings and there's different ways to do that but just start slow going forward this is stuff you can do in 15 20 seconds short to heavy going forward then you do your backwards just lathering up and this is stuff you can do every day even when you're not throwing part of your kind of no ball drill routine then like I like to tell ball players almost just making up stretches best part of my job being around college and professional pitchers especially they just do a lot of stretches to get long loose and flexible like just say like a pitcher outfielder you know just anything where you're lathering up again just 10 to 15 second reps can get through this quick. This is a real popular one too, kind of the double arm throw. And some trunk twisters. Everyone joining along, just getting loose, lathering up. You know, then from there, we'd kind of get into our active stretch. I'm just gonna stay a little shorter distance. You guys can get a little farther in your yards, things like that, or your basement. You don't need a lot of space. Okay, I could just start out with you know, just walking leg lunges. And again, there's millions of ways to exercise, get loose, lather up. This is just simple routine. I like to do to guys myself or when I'm training with ball players. Walking leg lunges. You know, then from there, kind of just a little backwards, down and back. Go to a karaoke. Again, I'm just not a race here. At the end of your workout, then you can do some heavy sprints or heavier stuff. We're just looking to lather up here. One I like a lot is a defensive shuffle because I like to ramble a lot to ball players. It's about getting sideways in baseball, whether you're throwing, pitching, hitting, a catcher making a throw, it's about getting sideways. So doing a lot of kind of defensive shuffles, getting used to leading with that lead hip. So from there, old man's out of gas here. So from there, we'd get right into our throwing program. So I have my partner right here. And again, this is exactly what college teams and pros teams do. There's different type of drills, things like that. 
A lot of teams start out with the ball flip, which can be good. Just take it serious. A lot of guys just kind of do the ball flip like that's kind of a baby throw. If you're doing that ball flip, I personally, I'm left-handed. My partner Bo is right-handed. I, I like to do like I'm actually throwing. And sometimes a couple fake ones and then the third one live, just to kind of get that feel. I'm not, we're just doing our four seam grip. We're thinking there's a position player pitcher right now. A couple fake ones and throw. Just kind of the boring ball flip, lathering up. Then from there, I'd go a little feet frozen. This is a very underrated, underrated drill. You see Jose Barrios and a lot of the ball players, they do this drill. Gets you to kind of rotate your hips. Ripping your hips, separate, rotate, and throw. That's why medicine ball work is so great as part of your training program. So again, feet frozen, the only time I'm not really using my legs. Separate, rotate, throw. Then from there, my partner would back up. As you guys all know, hopefully you're taught, one ball player always stays on the foul line or a base. The other partner is the only one that kind of backs up. So we're doing this at home with family members and stuff. Again, being safe here. We're not doing, obviously we're no teams right now or anything. Then we kind of go sideways here. Sideways and punch, I like to say. Just get that backside through. Stuff again, I wish I would have known when I was, I would have, being a lefty, it's my left leg. You righties, it's your right leg. That's your tree trunk, that's your load up leg. It's not just there, you, you want to load on it, feel it, and get out there. I know Louie and the professional players really work on their glove hand too. The pros work on their glove hand as much as their throwing iron. So obviously, I'm sure if you've done a lot of drills, sometimes you just pause and freeze just to make sure your glove hand's out there. Louie, that's something you work on a lot, your glove hand? Yeah, yeah. I may be talking more as a pitcher outfielder right now. Like Coach Heave, when he talks more infielder catching, or Coach, Coach Bo, pitcher outfielder long and loose, so. Max Kepler making a throw from right field to third. He gets a little more long and extended because it's a longer throw. And then as a pitcher, too, we want to get long. Separate, rotate. Ball players all doing that. Just getting loose. Load and throw. Bo's getting loose there. Hit your buddy in the belly. Have a target, too. You love what if there's no nobody to catch with? Yeah, great. Great question. Some of you have been to our clinics before. We're big wall throwers. We really promote throwing at a wall whenever you can. Whether it's a brick wall or a net, a padded wall at a ballpark, you go to Target Field before a game, you'll see the pros, major leaguers, literally throwing at a wall or something. So a great way to train, you get a double whammy on that because obviously it should come right back to you, get a little defense on it. So different ways to just be creative. Make sure it's time. light against the wall though. Yes. Not, not that you damage the wall. Exactly, exactly. Safety first. So the sideways and roar, so that if we're getting into a pitching program, and we like to pro promote pitching, always remember college teams carry 20 pitchers or more, half your team. So be a position player, but if you have any interest in pitching, pursue pitching. So if we were here before we go to long toss, we're just gonna play a little balance catch. Louie, you do this spring training, just a lot of, obviously you're a pitcher, so you're working on your balance. Pitching is throwing off of one leg, and kind of like shooting a free throw. You can pretend nobody's on this. And you can hold it a little longer than you would in a game. That's where we don't, we don't want to confuse guys. We don't want to cute, cute, confuse ball players of all ages. I like to say kind of count to five during this drill. So I'm holding it longer than I would in a game. I'm under control. Balance catch. Then from there, my partner would just gradually back up into long toss. We've all heard different things on long toss. Being around college and pro guys, specifically the twins, it, it, you know, some of them, everyone kind of gets, Wes Johnson, the Twins pitching coach is fabulous. He lets each of the 12, 13 pitchers be their own ball player. Everyone has a different routine. So, on feel, but they don't get as far as you would think sometimes long toss. They don't, you don't have to throw from 300 feet away. Kind of get far, get a distance, puff and puff. Coach Heath can maybe jump in on that later. So, but I'm just kind of stretching it out. Everyone's getting loose now. Once you're loose, cut it loose. You know, kind of like a runner. You don't just go full out right away. As I start getting loose, I put a little more on it. And you're always practicing active, athletic catch. Okay, rarely is that ball gonna come right to you. Just think try out catch, someone's always watching you. 
Short to long toss. So we would go get to kind of a distance twice the pitching mound. That's something we could get more in depth on as we go into more specific stuff. Short to long and then we'd come on in. One quick drill, the hat drill is a fabulous drill. This is a drill the pros do. Louis, I don't know if you ever do this one. Sometimes you see the pros, outfielders, just like all the pro outfielders are taught to one hop to a base. Okay, the hat drill is a great drill. So when Bo is throwing it to me, Bo will try to hit the hat and one hop it to me. Kind of a downward throwing drill. You know, I can, and I, when I'm receiving it, I can pretend I'm making a tag. Just be an athlete, guys. That's what we're going to be doing at home for days, weeks, who knows how long. Just be a kid, do old school type stuff, like a lot of us parents did when we were kids. Pick up games, making up drills in your yard. So Bo would try for that one more time, downward. Specifically, I think that's a really good drill as a pitcher or outfielder. That one hop, get on top out in front drill. Okay. You love. What if uh, they can't get outside and they they have to stay inside their house? And, and what kind of things with what you're talking about that they could do? Yeah, that's another another great question. Good. Due to the weather and obviously being safe, you know, inside we can just kind of go to no ball world. That's a good segue. Louis, I'm gonna have Louis come in demonstrate the towel drill. So if we, if we can't actually throw a ball, we can do this. I'll have Louis just. So Real quick, kind of show what he does as a professional with a towel drill. So what you want to do is, is, is kind of is kind of fold the towel and put it on your middle finger. And there's a, a couple things I can do to start. Have a wide base like this. Have a wide base like this. And and, and, and pretty much all you do is work on extension and reaching reaching out when you throw. So you start like this and do rockers. You rock forward, back, like that. And do and do a couple reps of those, five to ten reps. And pretty much, pretty much, pretty much, all it's working on is getting extended and reaching out, extension. And then after a couple of rockers, you, you can come set like this and do and, and go from your stretch. Work on your glove side and your arm action and, and, and using your legs on your base. Like this. Five, ten reps of those. Just like that. And then if you have a chair, you can also use a chair to, to like have like a a thing to hit. So, uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna use my glove as a chair so it, it, it's back to the rafters again. You're reaching all the way out, smacking the chair. Just smacking the chair like that. And also, you can go from your wind up. Still working on extension. Nice, slow, controlled, fluid. Keep everything loose. Five, ten reps again. Awesome, Louis. That's fabulous. Thank you. And then again, coming from a current professional. So and sometimes we think, ah, silly drills, things like that. But just like a hitter hits off the tee and does dry swings, like Dawson was asking, that's the stuff we can do at home with a towel or throwing, or maybe throw into a little, you know, couch or something. Obviously, get approval, tennis ball, just anything. But you saw Louis there, how he hasn't even thrown today, and how just spread and athletic he is. Instead of the, like most of us, you know. Just get that body athletic and spread, just like you hear from your coaches and family all the time. Be an athlete when you're a ball player. So that's, that's just a great drill to do. But if we are back throwing live, again, at a wall or net, or if you have a partner that you're playing catch with, just partner pitching. And this is what the pros do every day, partner pitching. Out in the outfield, open land, we're just at our home in our backyard or again inside doing dry drills. Whoever has the ball as a pitcher, the other guy would crouch. So Coach Bo is crouching right now, and I'm working on my wind up or stretch and I'm just working on pitching. I'm not just throwing the ball, pitchers work on pitching. So then I would crouch down, just a little partner pitching. And obviously a lot of you at all ages are catchers too. Okay, as we do more stuff, we'll do specific catching type things, but catchers just crouch. Let me tell you what happens in a game. So, especially you older guys, if you're playing with pickoffs, that's what really separates ball players. When they're working from the stretch, I mean the runner on, so they're actually doing what would happen in a game. They're mentally a little simulated game. Lean in, get my sign, come to an athletic set, freeze the runner, focus on the hitter. Just imitate what happens in a game. That's what's gonna keep separating as a ball player. So partner pitching, great way to train. Okay, then from there, then I'm gonna hand it over to Bo. He's gonna get a little more in depth on defense. Couple of favorite drills. 
Miguel Sano, even a lot of the Twins pitchers do a fireball catch. So, Bo, we're going to do a little fireball. A lot of the pros like to do it. Nick Anderson, a major leaguer on the Rays who worked out, he's a local guy. He said he likes to do the fireball drill after his long toss because he just doesn't want to overthink. He just wants to get the ball and go, even though as a pitcher you would have more time. So just the old man here, quick footwork catch. Just for like 30 seconds. And great to do contests for 30 seconds at home, whoever you're working out with. You could have a little family contest in 30 seconds. Every time you catch it, you get a point. You and your buddy, you can see who gets the most points in 30 seconds. So just fireball's a great drill. Lather you up, breaking your glove. If they didn't have a baseball or a partner, can they still work on their footwork? Yes, oh, for sure. For sure, without a partner, again, at the wall, net, whatever you're throwing into the couch, or just back to no ball drill, working on that, that athletic footwork. It's all about having your legs under you. So, so I'm going to hand it over to Bo. Bo's going to get into some daily defense. Thank you. Yeah, so I want to start off with daily defense. Uh, Two of the biggest things that we can work on when we're at home is our footwork and our hands. We don't really need much space to work on our footwork and hands. Obviously, those are probably the two most important parts to infield. So what we're going to start off with is our daily defense. I don't know if you saw the video we posted last week, but our daily defense. I'm going to have Coach Eric come over here. So we're going to get about six feet apart. Nice and easy. Come in. Get down on our knees. Roll our partner a ground ball. Starting straight to it. Working on coming through the ball, attacking. We're always wanting to attack the ball. We don't want to be timid and wait for it to get to us. We want to go out and get it in front of us. Always have that attack mindset. The biggest reason why we attack the ball is because if it takes a bad hop right here and our hands are back here, the ball is going to have more time to jump on us and take a bad hop. So it's just kind of simple math that we're just trying to get out in front, cut off that angle, and get the ball before it takes a bad hop and gets away from us. So we can do straight to him, right to him, for about two minutes, nice and easy. Biggest thing is not having too hard of a throw. We don't need to work on crazy speed. We're just working on our hands, working on our emotion. What we go through, building our muscle memory so that when we get into a game, we go right back to that and trust our hands to go get the ball, to go attack it. So we'll do a couple more of these. Then we can flip open to our backhand, flip open the hips 45 degrees. Backhand, same thing, we're still trying to attack the ball. We're just keeping our thumb sweeping the floor the whole way through. Keep that thumb over, flip the glove over. Same thing, attacking the ball, bringing it through. So you could roll it against the wall, right? Absolutely, Tennis yep. ball. Roll it against the wall, find mom or dad, I'm sure would love to do this for a couple minutes a day. Get the dog involved, do whatever you can. Just the biggest thing is attacking the ball and coming through it. We don't want to be shy and wait for the ball to get to us. We want to go get it. There you go. Somebody asked, what's a bad hop? A bad hop is when, well, we're on turf here, so we're not going to get many bad hops here. But if you're on a bad grass, it just... About four feet in front of you, it just jumps on you, and you there's really nothing you can do but trust those hands and that you're going to come and attack the ball to have a better chance of feeling it. I'll give you a little between hop like that. Yep. So see that? That was kind of a between hop. Landed about three feet in front of me, kind of jumped up on me. But since I was able to attack the ball, I was able to cut that off and grab the ball before it was able to get away from me. So yeah, a couple minutes of those, and then we'll flip over to our forehands. Forehands are obviously the same thing. Just Open on the forehand, so foot, uh, hips open 45 degrees the other way. Same thing, just attacking the ball. Really simple, we're not making up any new crazy drills, just simple drills that pros, college, high school athletes do every day. There you go, so a couple minutes of those, nice and easy, same thing. Do one more here, that way. All right, and then if you wanna hand me a cone there, so another thing as infielders is our footwork. That's really important. We can do this against a wall. We can have a friend or a mom or dad throw the ball, brother or sister. So we're gonna get about 10 feet apart. You're gonna simply start behind the, the cone. And he's gonna roll right to me. And we're just gonna work on coming around the ball, shuffling, and faking a throw to first. The reason we wanna come around the ball 
is simply to build momentum towards first base. So that before we field the ball, we're already have our feet set towards first base. And we're not just fielding the ball and then starting our footwork. Because that's going to lead to bad throws. We're not going to have our momentum under us. Well, the other thing it's going to do, it's going to shorten the distance. So if we wait for the ball, I'm going to be further back when I start to throw. Then simply if I come around the cone, attack, get my feet work, footwork going to first base, shuffle, and just like that, I'm six feet close to the first base. It's going to be an easier throw. So it's going to lead to less errors, obviously. Do a couple more of these. And if you're doing this at home, you can do 15, 20 of them. Just work on that footwork. Just so, same thing, muscle memory. When we go back to this in a game, when we get a routine ground ball, we're going to go back to this. What if they don't have a cone? If they can use anything. I've used a bucket before, water bottle, literally anything that you can just go around, simply. Just building that muscle memory, like I said. Add in a nice shuffle. Do one more of these. All right, and then another quickness drill we can do, working on our feet, is just a lateral quickness drill. So if, with your partner, whoever you're working with, the wall, they'll either throw it right or left. And you're just simply gonna work on your shuffles. Shuffling, getting that, those quick feet going, work on those legs. As infielders, we gotta be quick. So have them mix it up, left or right. If you're throwing against the wall, just throw it to the right or the left. You'll be able to move. Work on his footwork. And when we're doing these drills, you can also go back to what we did in dailies. When you're attacking the ball, you're always working on that. Coach Bull, will you go through the footwork in slow motion? The coming around the? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So coming around the cone. So if my partner's right here, we're going to be coming right, left, right, left, fielding, shuffle, shuffle, and fake the throw. So right, left, right, left. Shuffle, shuffle, throw. And the right, left, it's important, but the main thing is that we're just coming around the ball to get to the, to get to the ball. But right, left, shuffle, shuffle, fake the throw. Really simple drill you can do at home. So we'll do a couple more of these lateral ones. Make me move a little bit. Dance to his feet, be an athlete. Yep. Get low, see how I'm attacking the ball, fielding out in front, just like we were working on with dailies. There you go. All right. And then I got one outfield drill for you guys, the drop step drill. So as outfielders, our most important movement is the first step. When we see a ball in the gap, right center, left center, down the right field line, our first steps can be the most important part, cutting down that ball and getting the right angle at it. You see in the MLB these days, they have the stat cast, the catch probability. That's what they're talking about. The drop step can help decrease that, so it makes it more likely you'll be able to get, get to the ball quicker and make the catch. So I'm gonna have my cone, water bottle, whatever, as a starting point. I'm gonna have you come in here. And your partner is simply gonna throw it over your right shoulder or your left shoulder. Doesn't have to be too far. It's just working. When you read that, are you opening up with your right hip? When it's over your right shoulder, right hip going to the ball, or over your left shoulder, your left hip. And coach, why don't you show them just by yourself too? Because yeah, obviously, so much of the, sure. you can just give yourself a toss individually. Yeah, if you're by yourself, you can just simply stand there, throw it over your right shoulder. <laughs> go after the ball and throw it on your left shoulder. Again, with all these infield, outfield drills, the biggest thing is just that muscle memory so that once we get into the game, we don't have to think too much. We can just resort back to what we've been practicing at home and what we've been doing with these drills. So really simple. I mean, just the th biggest thing is just doing these drills. Pros, college players, high schoolers, they're doing these every day at practice. So during this quarantine, I'm sure there's a lot of the competition that's not going to be doing these drills but if you're doing them, you're going to be getting ahead of the curve. You're going to come back once baseball gets back, and you're going to be ready to go. You're going to be ahead of the curve. So, Coach, can you just show us a, a, a no-ball crow hop? Yeah. A no-ball crow hop, just like Max Kepler and Buxton would be doing. Sure. Yeah, so for the crow hop, you can just set the ball down. And with the crow hop, we're fielding the ball off our left foot, jumping up, 
and following through on a throw. This is for outfielders when we need a powerful throw. So we're running up to the ball, and the biggest thing is, if we're right-handed, we're jumping off our left foot. And you can really exaggerate this. You can really kick it up a notch. You don't have, maybe in a game you won't be doing that, but if you go back to that exaggeration and really getting up high, that's going to kind of have it in your mindset to do that. Feeling off our left foot, coming up. And this is a no ball drill. You don't need a ball to do this. Just work on pretending like you're fielding the ball, hopping up, and faking a throw. You could even you could have a towel in your hand to work on when you throw to make sure you're finishing out front. Just get creative. We're really working on that crow hop. Sprinting up off that left foot if you're a righty. Obviously lefty would be the opposite. So that's what I have for defense. So pass it on over to Coach Heave over here. Glad you could uh, join us today. I'm going to go over a series of different drills, things you do by yourself, things you can do inside. Uh, the one thing that's great about hitting um, in this situation is that um, baseball is such a mental game and hitting a baseball is by far uh, the biggest psychological component in all sports. So a big thing that we teach in our hitting is the mental approach. We want to be able to make sure that you're in a situation where you're thinking through uh, every drill. So in other words, there's one of the things we would do. Think of a place that you've played. Think of a team that you've played against. Think of a situation in which you've been up to bat or a teammate's been up to a bat. Go through that situation. So in other words, I might be taking some swings and my approach might be nobody out, a base runner on third, I'm going to try to hit the ball to the outfield. So I'm going to take an approach mentally to get my approach to get the ball in the outfield. So I'm thinking mental approach through this. So when you're taking your swings, you don't have to have a ball. You don't actually you don't even have to have a bat. Go through the process of mentally training your mind to be ready to hit. So the first thing we're going to do when we're starting off we separate our hitting into seven different areas. First thing we concentrate on is dry swings. Okay, so we're gonna be able to swing a bat without hitting anything, that's number one. Number two, hitting ball off a tee. So if you have a tee, great. If not, not a big deal. Number three, soft toss. Once again, not a big deal because number one, if you do dry swings, don't need a partner. Tee work, don't need a partner. Soft toss, you would think you need a partner. But what I can do is I can take a tennis ball and I can toss it in the air. So I can toss it and hit. So that is self toss, same as soft toss. Now, when we do soft toss, self toss in this case, we are using that just like a tee. So if you don't have a tee, no problem. Go out and get some self toss. Some things you can hit. If you're in a house, you can't get outside, you know, get some rolled up socks. Take some old towels, roll them up, okay? You can do those kind of things. Um, some of the things that we use, um, let's see here. What, what if they can't use a bat inside, Coach Heeb? If you can't use a bat inside, if I can't use a bat inside, so one of the things that I can do, I can still use my hands. So I can go through the approach. One of the things I like to use, is a badminton bird because that way it doesn't go very far so that's one thing you can use um, if you can't use a bat inside I can still go through drill work okay so I'm gonna do it this way so you can see the drill work I would do first thing I would start off with is getting myself into a low position what I'm trying to do is stretch my hands for my front foot okay so now as I get into this position I'm going to stretch. No, I'm not going to separate my hands a long way. What I'm going to look for here is I want to keep my hands in or above my right foot. Okay, so I'm going to go from right here and be able to load. Now what I'm doing is as I load, it's maybe hard to see with a cage jacket, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch. So if I'm doing here, you might see the, the side of my shirt wrinkle just a little bit. Okay, maybe you'll see it over here. 
but I'm separating. Separating the bottom half from the top half is probably one of the most important components in hitting. So when I'm practicing hitting, I need to be able to separate my bottom half from my top half. If I can do that, I'm going to be able to create more power and I'm also going to let the ball travel more. So I can stay here and practice separation. Separate. Okay. Can you give that example now with the bat? Sure. So it's going to be easier to see. I'm going to show you two different ways you can work on separation now with the bat. So when I'm doing this, you're going to see the side of my shirt start to wrinkle. Okay, you'll see it here. Okay, and notice that when I'm taking my hands, it's just like I'm going to punch. Okay, so if you got, to, have you ever been upset with someone, you punch them. You don't punch from out here. You punch from right above your 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 back foot. So I'm here, and I don't necessarily call this loading. I call this launch. I'm getting right here, launch, because right here. When I get to this position, I'm going to do damage from right here. So I'm separating here. And think of this. Think of a band from my front foot to my hands, stretching. And then it's going to stay stretched because I'm going to start turning my bottom side. This doesn't move until I get to there. So I can practice my separation. Another way you can look at it is like this. Put the bat in front of your shoulder like such. Do the same thing. You'll notice that the bat will turn back. And then as you turn your hips, the shoulder doesn't move until the end. That would be a great drill that you can do over and over and over again. We use it with bats. You can also use it with a broomstick. If you have a PVC pipe, you can do that too. So if you're in a garage, if you're in your basement, you got a little more space. Heck, if you're in your bedroom, you, know, you should be able to do this. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't have coronavirus, by the way. I've got a throat issue. So, one of the things to also keep in mind with this, when I'm working on my swing, I'm working on hitting the ball the opposite field first. Then we're going middle. Then we're going. Then we're going pull side. So, when I'm focusing on these drills, I load my hands, and I'm thinking of going oppo first. Then I'm going middle. Stretch. Here. Load it. So the swing doesn't change. You recognize where the pitch is. Outside, middle to in. Always work oppo, then middle, then pull. Okay? So I'm a big fan of self-toss. Being able to toss a ball up. And that's a hard drill to do. So... If you've got a big field, you, know, you can use you can use baseballs. I, I use these for different drills. You can use baseballs. You can use lacrosse balls. You can use different things when you're on a park. Okay. Tennis balls. If you've got a smaller area, use tennis balls. You, you, these are great for a garage. I'm a big fan, and this is a shameless plug for smush balls. Smush balls are like a stress ball. Okay, we hit these. It's going to have a realistic feel of a baseball, but this is not going to do damage. Okay, so this could be done in a house. Okay, you can hit these in a bedroom. Obviously not against a wall that has pictures. Okay, those will come down. But you can hit these in the house. Okay, uh, my, uh, my son used to do that. Somebody yeah. asked, what, is, what does soft toss mean? Soft toss is where the ball is lightly lofted in the air. Typically where people make the mistake is they soft toss from a side at a distance, okay? I'll demonstrate that briefly. Usually a hitter is standing here. I'm standing here and I'm tossing at an angle. I'm tossing here. Personally, baseball's been around for 175 years. A pitch has yet to come from the side of the hitter, okay? So, what I like to do when we do our soft toss here at Northwestern, one of the things I like to do is have the hitter be ready. And what I do is I point out just like that's a pitcher. So if you're the camera, you're the pitcher, I'm gonna go like this, go ready, set, and I put the ball right here and I flip it straight up. So the reason I do that, 
I treat it like a, a ball that's on a tee that's moving. So the difference between soft toss and self toss is now I don't have somebody tossing the ball for me. I'm tossing it to myself. So I can stand right here. I can set the ball back. I want to hit the ball to the opposite field. I can go from right here and didn't hit it well, but I hit, did hit it opposite field. So what I can do is I can work on different parts of hitting the ball, okay? So if I've got something light and I want to work on hitting, you know, in my garage, different parts, to the backyard, different parts. Um, heck, if you're in your bedroom with a rolled up sock, hitting the different parts of your room. What knuckles do you line up on your bat? Okay, so that's a, that's a great point that I'm gonna bring up here. Well, what knuckles do you line up, okay? It's all about comfort. All right, now, what sometimes what hitters will do is they'll sometimes close themselves off. And when they close themselves off, what it does is it takes the bat and sticks it deeper in their hand. So if they stick it deeper in their hand, we can see this well enough here, what it does is it locks in the wrist. Okay, now, some guys will feel more comfortable here. This is how I like to swing it because it gave me loose wrist and also puts the bat, you can see this here, puts the bat in my fingers. So if I can put the bat in my fingers, it's gonna give me a better whip. And realize too, when I get back, when I'm working on my swing and I work on my load, I'm letting the ball travel as far as it can. I'm gonna rely on my ability to be an athlete. I'm working on being quick. So if I can work on being quick with my hands, I can get in this position and what I can do is let the ball travel and then at the last second I get to here, snap. And I can snap really quick with my hands. Shoulders, big muscles, slow muscles. Wrists and fingers, small muscles, fast muscles. Okay, so we wanna take advantage of the fast muscles as, as much as possible. <laughs> so, if I can get into that as best I can, I wanna be able to work on separation and working on my swing. Another thing we can do, using a donut, increasing weight. Now, this is one way. Some people have, you might have some hand weights that, that go here, some go a little bit further. You can do things at home that you don't need to have a donut, okay? If you have a heavier bat, if you have a lighter bat, for example, we have a small training bat. If you have your t-ball bat, you can practice swings with your t-ball bat to work on hand speed. You can also do single hand work. So when we do our, our drill work, I'll put my hand out just like such, once again, working on separation and keeping my shoulder closed off on my swing. I can work with top hand and getting myself through. What we're trying to do is replicate the line of the pitch, okay? So a pitch is coming in at approximately 11 degrees, going at a very, very, very slight downhill angle. All I'm trying to do is have a very, very slight uphill angle, okay? So when I'm working on my swing, it's going very slightly up. I'm trying to meet that ball as best I can. I'm trying to keep as much of the barrel in the swing plane as long as I can. The longer I can, the better chance I have to hit it. So um, I'm not one who's gonna swing down on it. I'm not one who's gonna swing level, okay? Because there is a very slight downhill angle. So using a smaller bat, doing top hand and bottom hand work, okay? That's one thing. Another thing you can do, if you have change laying around the house, you can take pennies with tape, tape them around the end of your bat. If you take pennies all the way around the end of your bat, you're basically adding one to two ounces so you can end load your bat. You can tape pennies around the handle. You can, end, you can handle load your bat. All you're doing is taking pennies and taping them on, okay? Um, you know, sometimes we have to come up with some really cool ideas, and I was given that idea a couple years ago. So, just so you know, I'm a great thief of great ideas. So, somebody gives me something, I'm going to steal it. I won't put my name on it, but uh, if you like it, steal it, put your name on it, use it, okay? So, we want to make sure that every time we can, we want to get as many good swings as possible. Last thing I want to talk about in hitting. It's not quantity of swings, it's quality of swings. 
okay? I'm an old man, I'm almost 60 years old. So I'm doing swings here and I'm getting tired, okay? Now, obviously, I need a lot of help with quality and quantity at my age. But the point you should be made here is that if you can take 20 good swings and your swing starts to break down a little bit, take a break, okay? A hitter in a game, college, high school, professional, will get maybe three to four at-bats in a game. In those three to four at-bats, they will average seeing, seeing, not swinging, seeing five pitches, okay? So, if you get four at-bats, you get five pitches, that's 20. 20 pitches to see, not 20 swings. So here, every time you take 20 swings, you just play the game. Every one of those swings should be game quality. If it can't be game quality, you're, you're cheating yourself a little bit. Take advantage of that opportunity. So once you get done taking 20 swings, take a break, okay? Major leaguers take a break, you should take a break too. So take a little break, make sure you're not, you, if you're feeling soreness in your hands from your swing, you're swinging too much. You've got too much done. So um, I wanna make sure that you are uh, getting good enough quality, good enough swings, and um, yeah, just wanna be able to answer whatever questions you might have. Um, are there any other questions that we have there? Um, not that I saw. Okay, great. Eric, we'll need for you to come back up. Coach, he got his back here. Thank you, thank you. We've got about six, seven minutes here to go. I'm gonna just, Stress a couple more no ball drills, and then Coach Heap's gonna close so much of this on, on your own. Take it back on a couple of bows drills, you know, just a little family contest. I know this seems silly. I'm an old Phi Ed guy. You can just toss the ball and catch it, okay, easy enough. If it gets, you know, if you, if you can go outside, you can toss it higher. Just try to get behind the ball, two hands, soften it, or a tennis ball, or an egg, or whatever. Just having fun, family approved. But a, a fun little contest would be toss, clap, and catch. Obviously you want clap in a game, but this is a good coordination drill. Toss it, see how many claps you can get before you catch it. Have a little family contest. Every time you do it, start over. You know, toss, clap, and catch. But again, just being creative, contest, have some fun, stay positive, stay individual. I think the positives and what we can really get out of this is we're home training. You guys will get more of a feel for the game and your baseball IQ, which is so much lacking nowadays. There's kids, there's studs that can crush the ball, there's guys that can throw 90, but do they have the feel for the game? You kind of learn to self-coach, self-train. You're gonna get a feel for the game or the baseball IQ. So, again, thanks for having us. I'm gonna have Coach Heap close us down. Coach, we got about like 15% battery, so. Oh, okay. All right, so a couple things we're gonna go over here really quick. Uh, number one, I'm gonna go over some exercises that you can do at home. Reason I've got three baseballs. Baseballs are five ounces. So baseballs that uh, you put three in your hand, that's, that's gonna be 15 ounces, basically a pound. So you can exercise your rotator cuff. So exercises you can do. So we can start off, bend over at the waist. We're gonna start off here with Y's. And as you do that, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Squeeze, squeeze about a set of 15. Okay, next one you're gonna do are A's. I'm going here like this. Squeeze the shoulder blades together again. Next one we're gonna do is T's. I go here like this. Next one we're gonna do, we're gonna do external rotation. So I can go here like this, externally rotate. And then internal rotation. So with this, I would lay on the ground and do this. So you're laying on your side. I'd be laying on this side doing internal rotation, okay? So five real quick, arm strengthening, keep you going. Last thing I wanna finish with is this. This is unprecedented times. This is gonna be, uh, this is something that you've never experienced, heck, I've never experienced before. But I want you to understand this. It's, it's, this is not the first time we've had an issue like this in our country's history. This is gonna to come to a time where we're gonna be bigger, greater, and stronger because we're working together. We are taking our time to help you. You're gonna, you're gonna take this and you're gonna help others. That's what's gonna make our country stronger. That's what's gonna make us better and you're gonna get better for it. One other point you're gonna make is that you're gonna start to understand now that you don't have the opportunity 
to be with others, relationships are now important and huge. So there's gonna you're gonna take a look at this and go like, I'm not gonna take advantage or I'm not going to take for granted my relationships with my friends. So hey, you know, when we get started again, it's gonna be a great celebration. We're gonna be bigger, better, and stronger through this. So hang in there. We're doing our part. Do your part. Thanks. All right, thank you, Coach Heap. Thank you, Coach Eric Lovedall, Coach Bo Lovedall. This will be on the MYS Gopher State Baseball Facebook page, so you can share it with your team, share it with your teammates, everybody that is part of the youth baseball community in Minnesota and the upper Midwest. We will continue to do things as we can, providing opportunities for you to continue to uh, get better at home and, and continue to improve your skill. Um, thank you so much for tuning in today and look for more things again on the MYS Gopher State uh, and the Minnesota Youth Athletic Services Facebook, Twitter, and mys.org. Until next time, stay safe and healthy.